not our customer. It's just not our customer yeah, so much. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to interview um, Haley B. Barlow, who's getting her engagement. Oh, you're so lovely. Oh, wait, you interviewed her already? I called her last night. It's something that we use and have been using to represent sort of our identities, our power, our like very significant life moments. Um, and that's initially what attracted me to jewelry because it, it's so rich um, in all that it can represent. Um, but when we're using materials that have caused harm to other people and the environment to create a symbol of love and commitment or identity, to me it feels at odds, you know, and we we take um, the privilege of making jewelry for other people very seriously and we want um, to only work with materials that we feel like our clients would be proud to own. As you can see, this is very efficient. It's able to do this within a couple of seconds to get this. And then if we move to the natural diamond, we get a pass result. So that tells us that it has detected the natural signature, and we can pause the diamond. And the other sample is a natural diamond. In the past, poor quality, laboratory-grown uh, diamonds, you could actually identify by eye. They would have clear, heterogeneous distribution of color, for instance. You can see these growth structures by eye. Um, or you would have pieces of metal that got stuck in from the growth process, the artificial growth process. Uh, but nowadays, obviously, because demand is for higher color and lower uh, impurity contents for the stones, you're not going to have these inclusions. And that means that by eye, unfortunately, because they're chemically the same material as the natural stones, it's, they're imperceptible, you can't see whether they're lab-grown or natural. Um, I mean, there's some man-made diamonds that are produced with hydro um, energy or, or solar energy, and then you have some that are produced, you know, with grid power that's being fed by coal. Um, and then you have some, you know, natural diamond production operations that are, you know, very efficient and, um, you know, very thoughtfully run, um, you know, from an environmental impact, you know, standpoint. So um, there's a, a lot of variation. So I think to just say that, you know, man-made diamonds are the, Eco-friendly alternative is 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 too simple um, of a narrative. It's it's much more nuanced than that. Responsible sourcing at Biennial, and this is on our website as well. <laughs> For customers who want to buy a lab-grown diamond um, with the idea that it's the most sustainable choice, I would suggest that they um, really research where the lab-grown diamonds are coming from. Um, most lab-grown diamonds on the market are produced overseas um, with a really high environmental footprint due to like the energy that's sourcing them, um, or sourced to make them. Our lab-grown diamonds are sustainably certified or carbon neutral through an offset program or the type of energy that um, is being used to make them. I would also suggest that customers really research the type of metal that is going in their rings. We use either 100% recycled metal or fair mined gold, and we also make all of our jewelry in our Philadelphia workshop. I think that's a piece that often gets ignored is how the jewelry is made and where it's made.